Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. And I'm out here in uh, Mesa Verde National Park this today. It's Friday night. <laughs> and I have an idea that I might try camping out. And I have to say, I haven't camped out in a long time. <laughs> I'll show you. And I have a few trepidations, a few fears about it. Let me show you my setup here. <laughs> So I found this shady spot with a picnic table and a barbecue. And then I found out that I didn't bring my tent along. But fortunately, I did bring along um, one of those screen tents. And I have a, a plan because it's the monsoon season right here. And it rained like all get out last night. So I have this big tarp down here and my idea is if it rains, uh, if it starts raining tonight, I'll pull the tarp out from underneath the pins there and put it over top of the screen tent and then pin it on the other side. That's a makeshift plan for sure, but that's the best I could do right now. And luckily, this place is just full of nature spirits. And I feel very safe here, you know. And there are there are families on either side. There's a tent over there. And then um, coming around to the other side, there's a beautiful uh, dwarf oak grove and a family, a very nice family on the other side. So I'm pretty safe here. So anyway, the folks that I follow regarding Ascension are saying that one of the nicest places, the most pleasant experiences uh, right now is to be camping out in the, in the relative wilderness. Sometimes people suggest a national forest, but I'm a little too chicken for that, so I'm trying a regular campground. There are bears here, but I hear they're fairly friendly bears. <laughs> Only you have to keep all your food and water in your car, and they don't have that Yellowstone trick of ripping open your car here yet, so fortunately. <laughs> so I hear it's probably going to be a pleasant night. And it's the night of the supermoon, too, one of three, the first of three this summer. And around 5.30 in the morning, I should see the supermoon if I'm awake. So um, I thought I'd tell you a story about, uh, about my fears about camping out. It has to do with when I was about, oh, mm, maybe 12 years old. And I had a fear of, of, of the forest. I had had this fear, and the funny thing is, my family lived right on the edge of a forest. <laughs> and I had seen, uh, at one time when I was young, next to the pigeon house where I had to go down and close up the pigeons at night so the hawks and things, weasels couldn't get in, um, I saw uh, like a, a phantom dog come out of the um, forest, either a German shepherd or it seemed like a wolf, you know, it was scary to me for some reason. and. Ever since then, I had a fear of, like, the forest at night. And so, um, when I was 12, I decided to face this fear, right? And uh, I, I, I convinced my little brother, my very younger brother at that time, to go out and sleep on cots in the, in the woods with me right near the house that night, right? And so, all was fine. We had our blankets and our pillows and... We were, we were within sight of the house, right? But I had never slept outside before. <laughs> so I fell asleep, and he fell asleep, right? And uh, an undetermined amount of time later, I woke up, and I thought I heard a wild animal getting closer and closer, snuffling and, 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 and carrying on in the dark, right? And it seemed, and I just was paralyzed with fear. <laughs> And so, <laughs> I hate to tell this story, even though it's so many years later. And so I just lay there, paralyzed for a long time. And it, it, and it seemed like the sound was getting louder and louder. And finally, I summoned all my courage. And I opened my eyes, and I looked around me, and I found out that it was my little brother snoring. <laughs> but I was so... I was so terrified that I asked him, I woke him up, and it wasn't that easy to wake him up. <laughs> and I convinced him to go back in the house. And then I had to invent an excuse for my mother. <laughs> so, 
altogether not that pleasant of an experience, yes. <laughs> so then I was still uh, frightened of the woods at night, right? So I waited until I was in my 20s. And at that time, three terrible things happened to me all at the same time. It was almost as if the world were ending. It was one of those turning points in a person's life. And in my young life, I had seen no precedent. So um, I lost my job. It was a great job, one of my first. And I lost my a potential boyfriend. And that was very important to me at that time. And I learned that my father had a terminal illness. And then I went to Yellowstone Park. <laughs> <laughs> and so there I thought I will it is time to finally conquer this fear that I have there's no reason to have this terrible fear right I, I don't like having fears do you so that night I camped out in a campground a little like this one and I remember I had nothing but my sleeping bag and on the ground and and I lay awake all night long waiting for whatever it was to happen <laughs> and in the morning, when the morning light came, I was still alive, <laughs> and all was well. And so, I'm hoping that experience will carry over to tonight and, um, and, um, and protect me. I've called upon the Davic realm, and I see them, the Davic spirits, the, the um, spirits of nature, glittering through the oak leaves here. It's, it's terrific. And so... I hope I have the courage to stay here because I, I've heard it's one of the best places to be right now. And I'll let you know later whether or not I succeed. So, the night went just great. About an hour into the night, there was a rainstorm. And what do you know, the tarp worked just great as a rain fly. And there were no incidents whatsoever during the night. It was very quiet here. And uh, for the first time in a long time, I had untroubled sleep. I could see the, the, the nature spirits, like little bright lights winking in the, in the in, inside of my screen tent. It was great. And they were talking to me. It was really cool. They're so sweet. They're incredible. And I... I talked for a while with the deva. You know, the devas, um, they're not too happy with human beings right now because of the way we've, we've treated the earth, and the earth is their special responsibility. And I really understand their point of view. So, as far as ascension is concerned, the devas have their healing work to do, too. And a few prayers for them might be a good idea. And that's, so that's what I did last night. I wish them the very best and perfect healing for all the wonderful work they do and for their wisdom and their care of earth, their kindness to their all the nature spirits that they instruct and guide. I had a wonderful night, really, and, and everything, when I woke up this morning at 5 a.m., everything was so quiet. It was terrific. So I'll show you a little bit, just a little bit of the scene. I'll sign off. i just like you to know, Mesa Verde is a really special place, really special, really blessed. And uh, for people that are, that reach a certain age, according to the forest service it's ten dollars for a lifetime pass and then you get half off on your camping which is cheap in the first place so uh, the people are very nice here the people who camp here and the rangers so a very successful camping experience <laughs>